Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Today I'm doing another video on Pixelmator Pro. Now I do have some comments about the application. I'm going to save those until the end of the video because I have a lot I want to cover. So I want to jump right into it. First, I want to talk about the Pixelmator Pro workspace. There are actually a number of different workspaces you could choose from. When you first purchase the app or if you go to their website and download their fully working time limited free trial, you'll be in what's called the default workspace. And that's what we're looking at here. In the default workspace on the left-hand panel, you have layers. Above that, you could open or close the left-hand panel. You also could kind of zoom in or zoom out with that slider or fit it to screen. To the far right at the top, we have color swatches. To the right of that, we have the background removal tool. You know, the only other video I've done on Pixelmator Pro, I demonstrated the background removal tool and it's very, very effective to remove the background from the subject in a scene. I was surprised how good this tool actually works. To the right of that, we have information about this image. To the right of that, we have the ability to rotate the image. Then we have some canvas and image size functionality here. To the right of that, we have our export options, a lot of different export options. And we could open and close the right-hand panel. And the right-hand panel will reflect whatever tool we happen to have open. And those tools are on the far right. Right now I have color adjustments open. And if you hover over any of these tools, you'll see that I get this, I call them a smart tool tip. In the smart tool tip, you get kind of visual representation of what that tool does. You get the name of the tool, the keyboard shortcut of the tool, and a little write-up about the tool. Now, if you don't like these smart tool tips, you can turn them off in Pixelmator settings. I kind of like them though, it gives you an idea about what each of these tools do. And I mentioned that when you are clicked on a tool, that functionality appears in this right-hand panel. So right now, color adjustments are all right here. If I go down to, let's say, crop, all the crop adjustments will appear there instead. So very, very cool, very effective. Now, I did say that there are a number of different workspaces you could choose from. This is the default workspace. If you go up to Window, and go down to workspace layout, you can see that there's a photography workspace, a design workspace, illustration, painting, and workspace preferences. Since I'm a photographer, I wanna take a look at the photography workspace, and that only makes a slight change. What it does is it takes the tools that were on the far right and puts them up on top. But what it also did is it removed any tools that Pixelmator feels a photographer probably wouldn't use, and it actually added some tools that it thinks a, Pixelma a Pixelmator uh, that a photographer might want to use. So it did change it when it moved it. Now those tools it removed, they're not gone forever. They are found up here in the menu system. So if you do need a tool that isn't the default workspace, but isn't being shown in the photography workspace, you can access it through the menu. Now let's do an image edit for inside of this photography workspace. I have this image, it's just a Nikon RAW file from a Nikon Z7 II. What I like to do first is crop the image. So I'm gonna to go to the crop tool and you can see that I have the crop handles. If I click on the image or click on any of those handles, I get a rule of thirds overlay. And you can see all of that is controlled over here on the right. Down here we have a rule of thirds overlay. I could change it to grid or diagonal, triangle and so on. I like rule of thirds. But I do want to change something. Right now it's on auto show display. What that means is it isn't there until I actually click on a handle or click on the image. I want it to always show. So I'm going to go to always show. So I always see the rule of thirds. Then at the top, I want to change it from custom size to the original ratio. So I keep the original ratio and I'm going to grab this lower handle and move it until that lower horizontal rule of thirds line is directly on the horizon. And I'm just going to click on the image and move everything so that the lighthouse is directly on the left vertical rule of thirds line. And I think that's a pretty good crop right there. So I'm going to click apply. And I'm done with the crop tool. And it dropped us back into our color adjustments tool. And I think this tool is misnamed uh, because there's a lot more you could do besides color. You could affect the tone of the image. You could sharpen the image. You could add a vignette. You could add a LUT. So there's a lot of different things you could do beyond color. I think this should be called image adjustments, but that's just me. Now, again, when you choose the tool, you have all the functionality for that tool over here in the right-hand panel. At the top, you have presets. And there's a lot of different presets in different categories. 
So if you're into presets, you could come over here and just try a preset. You also could create your own presets. And then if you create them, you could export them or you could import presets that other people created as well. There's this ML enhance button and you'll see some of the tools, five of them have ML on them. That means machine learning. That's just an auto adjustment. If you're not into processing and you just want to get an automatic adjustment, just click on ML enhance. I'm not going to do it here. I want to manually adjust this, but that is available. To see a tool, turn it on. So I want to see the histogram, turn it on. There's the histogram. You can see it's Nikon raw file. I'm going to close that down. I'm not going to do anything with the histogram. Now, just to show you machine learning, let me open up white balance. Just click on ML. It will give me an automatic white balance adjustment. You can see the white balance was pretty good on this image. It didn't really adjust it too much. I could reset it and close it. Uh, lightness, this is the tone of the image. And you can see that we have an exposure, highlights, shadows, brightness, contrast, and black point slider. It's a little different than Lightroom, right? In Lightroom, you have a lights or a white and black slider. You don't have a brightness slider and you don't have a black point slider. Little different. So there may be a bit of a learning curve if you're coming over from Lightroom into Pixelmator Pro. But if you're a longtime user of Lightroom, you may remember that Lightroom 3 and earlier didn't have a whites or black slider and instead had a black point slider and had a brightness slider. So it is more similar to older versions of Lightroom as far as these sliders are concerned. You still get a very good edit with it. Um, I'm going to bring highlights down a little bit, open up the shadows quite a bit. Now brightness and exposure, you may think, well, those are the exact same thing, right? Well, not really. Brightness affects the midtones. It doesn't affect the highlights or shadows as much. As a matter of fact, if I move brightness to the extreme right, it really won't blow out the highlights. Unlike exposure, if I move that to the extreme right, it's going to blow out the highlights. Um, and similarly, if I move it to the extreme left, it could crush the shadows. Brightness won't crush the shadows either. So brightness is more midtones. It's more of a midtones adjustment. So bring that to the right. Contrast, I had a little contrast. Now, black point, I always move backwards, always. Um, for example, I want to make the darker parts of the image a little darker. I'll go to black point. I always move it to the left. And it doesn't. It does the opposite of what you might think. It actually makes those darker parts brighter when you move it to the left. So you got to move it to the right. So there's your tone adjustments. Now, you may think, I'm done with lightness. I'm going to just close it by turning this switch off. Don't do that, because if you do that, you actually turn off all the adjustments. So you have to leave it open. Hue saturation, just your typical hue saturation. I'm gonna add a little vibrance to this image. Again, I have to leave it open. Selective color, open that up. This is HSL, hue saturation and luminance for the L, but in this case, they call it brightness. Some other apps call it lightness. It's still the same thing. You know, you have red, orange, yellow, green, and so on, and you could affect the hue saturation and brightness of each of those different colors. I don't think I need to do anything with this image on that. So I'm gonna close that down. Below that we have color balance. These are your color wheels. Lightroom calls this color grading, same thing. Don't think I need to do anything with that. Levels, I like levels. Um, levels will allow you to get a really good white and black point. Uh, for, in this in for example, in this image, I think the brightest parts of the image could be a little brighter. So I would go to the levels uh, tool, the far right slider affects those highlights, and I would move this to the left until it just uh, is at the point where the uh, histogram starts to jut up. And I think that's a good whites adjustment. And similarly, I could do the same for shadows, but I don't like to move that one as far. So I'll just move that a little bit. And that is levels, so I'm gonna leave that open, I like that. Uh, curves, I don't think this image needs that. Replace color. Now we're getting to some of the tools that you may not use as often. Fade, don't think this one. Black and white, if you want to convert the image to black and white, this is where you would do it. And you have your black and white mix here, red, green, blue, tone, intensity. You could affect those colors. I'm not going to make this black and white. Uh, custom LUT, it has a lot of LUTs built in. Just go to this drop down, cinematic LUTs, just hover over them and you'll get a preview of any of these LUTs. I'm not going to use a LUT in this image, so I'll close that down. You could add a vignette. I'm not going to add one in this image, but you could. Uh, sharpen the image or add grain. You also customize these. For example, let's say you never use LUTs. Why have it here? Go to Customize, and you could see I could just remove the check mark from LUTs 
or custom LUT and it removes it. You also could add some that aren't there. For example, color monochrome, sepia, channel mixer, invert aren't there. EDR mode, if you wanted that added, you could as well. But that's good. So you could customize what is being shown over here. Now that really is my edited image. I think I'm done with it. You can see it's pretty easy to edit an image in Pixelmator Pro. There's a lot of stuff you could do there here. There's, you know, in future videos, I'll cover more of these tools. I'll do more of the functionality, but this is kind of just opening the door of Pixelmator Pro for you, get an idea of what the application does. Now I've been working with Pixelmator Pro for a while. Those of you that actually that follow my YouTube channel know that years ago, talking probably six years ago, seven years ago maybe, I did videos on Pixelmator. That was before there was actually a Pixelmator Pro. But I did videos on Pixelmator and you know, I just stopped. I, the light, I got into light, showing Lightroom videos and everyone liked Lightroom and I was doing Lightroom in Photoshop and I just got away from doing Pixelmator videos. So I wasn't really as familiar with Pixelmator Pro because I hadn't used it. So I downloaded it and started using it and I was pretty impressed with it. I think it has a good mix of some of the functionality from Photoshop and some of the functionality from Lightroom. Now it doesn't have all of the functionality from either of those two applications, but it has a nice mix that makes it a very effective application for particularly for a photographer. I think it's a great app. Now I failed to mention in that other video where I I demonstrated the background removal tool. I failed to mention it is a Mac only application. Uh, it is built specifically for Macintosh. Uh, you can go to their website if you had a Mac, if you have a Mac, go to their website and download a fully working time limited free trial and try it out. I think it's a 15 day free trial. When you're ready to buy it, you have to buy it through the Apple App Store, the Mac App Store, and it's $39.99. So it's not that expensive. Um, so, you know, try, I would say try the free trial first before you actually purchase it. Uh, in the description below this video, I'll have a link to their website so you could download their fully working free trial. I have no affiliation with them at all. I'm not affiliated. I don't make any money if you buy it. Nothing like that. I just think it's a pretty good app and I think it's a good alternative to Lightroom in the Adobe kind of ecosystem. And that's it. That's Pixelmator Pro. And again, I'll be doing future videos. I'll cover some more functionality of the application. If you have any suggestions, let me know in the comments below. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.